A group of archaeologists stumble upon a cave full of dinosaur bones, and nestled among all these prehistoric bones lies an alien fossil. They end up accidentally setting off an explosion by messing with a strange glowing red vein. Hughes and Campbell are the only survivors in the explosion, and the film cuts to two years later. Dr. Campbell is busy working on excavating a massive dinosaur fossil that he says is supposedly 50 times the size of a T-Rex. While all of this is going on, tensions begin to escalate between the US military and the Galaxions. When a spaceship belonging to the Galaxions slowly approaches the moon, all of a sudden the dinosaur's teeth start magically reattaching themselves, and its skeleton regrows like it's on steroids, and Campbell's sanity takes a nosedive faster than a brick in a swimming pool. You're my creation! <laughs> He begins screaming at the monster that he created him, except, no, you just found his bones. This line makes absolutely no sense, and just when you think things couldn't get any weirder, the Galaxions teleport the monster away. The nonsensical plot continues as the military sends in the infantry, helicopters, and fighter jets after the monster, but it's entirely ineffective. The monster, named Yangari, is revealed to be under mind control by the Galaxions. The military then introduces Project T, a last-ditch effort to fight the Kaiju with experimental jetpacks and laser cannons. The military successfully frees Yangari from the alien's mind control, but the aliens send in their own Kaiju named Psychor to fight the monster. If that all sounds like complete nonsense, well, it's because it is. Reptilian, or Yangari, serves as a remake of the 1967 South Korean kaiju flick Yangari Monster from the Deep. The film was marketed as a mockbuster of sorts, with the poster resembling the 1998 Roland Emmerich Godzilla film. Ironically, the home media release of the film was even distributed by TriStar, which was the exact same company behind the 1998 Godzilla movie. The story of the making of this film is honestly so much more interesting than the movie itself. According to IMDb, it was the most expensive South Korean film production up to that time. Young Gary was actually partially funded by the car manufacturer Hyundai and the South Korean government. As a result, the filmmakers were allowed to film on real military bases. Originally, the kaiju scenes were done practically, with well over 100 miniatures being constructed, and the Yangari suit took around six months to make. Once the film entered the post-production phase, the filmmakers decided to just slap CGI over the practical suits. Based on the behind-the-scenes pictures and the making of featurette that was available on wikizilla.org, it's honestly depressing thinking about what could have been. It reminds me a lot of the 2011 Thing movie. The filmmakers hired Amalgamated Dynamics to make some absolutely fantastic practical effects for the film. However, the studio mandated that it all be covered up with CGI, and it looks incredibly dated nowadays. Both films are inherently flawed with terrible writing on top of terrible effects. However, if the practical effects were at the forefront, it would have made the experience a lot more bearable. I mean, just look at these suits. They're almost on par with, like, the Gamera Heisei films, they look incredible. I really wish that we could have at least seen just a couple of shots of these in action. Apparently there are some shots here and there that are practical suits, but for the most part, it's all CG. After Young Gary's theatrical release in 1999, the filmmakers decided to George Lucas the film and overhaul the CGI in an effort to improve it. They also shot additional scenes and added more characters. This new version would be finalized and released in 2001. This is the version that ended up being released in the West on home media. It's also the version that I've been using for this entire review. So if you thought, oh, you know, they patched the CGI. No, this this is the patched version. It, it's, it's that bad. The original theatrical version is really hard to come by. I think I found a VHS rip of it on YouTube, but I'm not 100% certain if this is the theatrical cut or not. From my understanding, it was never released on home media, so I'm leaning more towards it isn't legit. But at the same time, I, I, I don't know. I'm fairly certain that the theatrical cut of this movie is still considered lost media to this day, as it was just shown in theaters and never released on home media. Despite all the money that was dumped into post-production and visual effects, Young Gary is probably most well-known for its god-awful CGI. At times, it is almost unwatchable. Me. 
compared to this guy, Godzilla is a pussy. Mark the Wilson, take the left flank. Dell and Moody take the right. At times, it feels like gameplay from a Sega Dreamcast game. If I had to come up with a valid comparison, I would definitely say it's about on par with 1995's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie. Specifically, the final fight scene with the Ninja Megazord. Yangari is pretty much on the same level of visual effects calamity. It's a tragedy, really, considering the potential this movie could have had. And the worst part is, it's not even so bad, it's good. It's just bad. It's so bad, it's bad. Even the worst tokusatsu films have a level of craftsmanship to them. For example, Godzilla's Revenge is an awful movie. Like, objectively, it's terrible. Hi, Springa! Hey! Come on over here! I won't hurt you! You won't? However, I've willingly watched it over 100 times at least. Your folks will get kind of worried, won't they? I don't think so. They're hardly home any time at all. Oh. Oh. Young Gary, on the other hand, is just difficult to watch because you can't even tell what's happening half the time. Even looking beyond the terrible visual effects, the acting is somehow even worse. Now, a lot of this has to do with the language barrier. The director hailed from South Korea and barely spoke English, while the cast was American and knew little Korean. So they had to have an interpreter on set. Young Gary was doomed from the start by this linguistic divide. The director struggled to convey his vision to the English-speaking actors, and they, in turn, found it challenging to understand his direction. As a result, the performances just come off as disjointed, and the dialogue is honestly so bad it's good. That's, that's the only part of the movie that is so bad it's good. The disconnect between the director's intentions and the actor's execution just leads to exchanges that feel contrived and devoid of genuine emotion. Scenes that are supposed to be tense and dramatic fall flat. And again, I know that, you know, it's a kaiju movie, so human drama doesn't have to be at the forefront, though films like Godzilla Minus One kind of disprove that idea. Regardless, this is just insane. <laughs> Just worn out your welcome. It's time you were returned to history. I also think the language barrier contributes to the film's lack of coherence in narrative and thematic elements. Without effective communication, key aspects of character development and plot progression were likely lost in translation, further muddling the film's overall impact. That's why that opening plot summary I gave kind of just sounded like complete nonsense, and that's because. This whole movie is nonsense. It, it, it's, it's really bad. And as much as I want to rip on this film, I have to say that it's kind of ironic because the plot is oddly similar to one of my favorite Godzilla films, Godzilla Final Wars. It's almost too similar, like bordering on plagiarism. I didn't even realize this until I saw a review on the website Letterboxd by user Kaiju Man. This whole idea may sound a bit bonkers, so let me explain. Godzilla Final Wars features the evil Exilians teleporting various kaijus across the globe in order to wipe out humanity. It's somewhat implied that some of the monsters are under mind control, and the Galaxions do something very similar here in Yangari. Even the beams look too close. like. Come on, but the weirdest part is Final Wars came out in 2004, five years after Young Gary, and technically three years after the 2001 re-release. So was Toho ripping them off? I, I don't know, I'm not gonna imply anything, but to sum it all up, I think it's ironic that Reptilian, or Young Gary, was marketed by TriStar as a mockbuster that played off the success of the 1998 Godzilla film. These movies are very similar as they both fail to be a faithful remake of the source material. This new take on Young Gary and the original 1967 version are like nothing alike. These films have nothing to do with each other, and the 1999 version of Young Gary is basically a Young Gary film in name only, much like the 98 movie. It's as if they just grabbed the title and ran with it, forgetting what made the original creature work so well in the first place. With that being said, I want to know what do you think? Have you seen this film? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm Cole McCormick, 
you're watching Firewood Media. And if you're new to the channel, we've got more kaiju-centric videos just like this, as well as original feature films and short films. I have a massive video on the Godzilla PS4 game that's dropping on Friday, so stay tuned for that. It's one of the longest videos I think I've ever made. I've spent the past month writing it. I've dropped hours and hours and hours into the game, so go check it out once it's available because I don't think I ever want to play that game again. Regardless, with all that out of the way, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.